everybody wants to tell you what's good for you. They don't want you to find your own answers. They want you to believe theirs. Di ba sa society natin, bawal suwayin ang mga authority figures, correct? Uh, bawal, bawal ang pagsabihin parents mo, mga ganun. Siyempre, mapapalo ka, mapalayasin ka. Bawal mong questioning yung teacher. Okay? Bawal mong questioning yung somebody mas mataas ang position sa'yo. Okay? Because sa society natin, nakondisyon tayo na pag-authority figure, kailangan sundin. People don't want to think. They want other people to tell them what to do. Sino naka-experience ng ganito? Or na-experience pa rin to? Na hindi ka makapag-decide kung wala kang pinagtatanungan na tao. Okay? Maraming ganun pa rin. Yung, di ba, mayroon silang bibili. O yan ang friend, ano mas maganda dito? Okay? O kaya, this lady, ano mas okay dito? Di ba? O kaya, sa relationship, sino pa sasagutin ko? Si Ms. Pastillas, ang problem niya, ganun, di ba? Sino sasagutin? Si sobrang dami. So, may issue na opinion. Di ba? Na-practice po kasi tayo na hindi mag-isip. Why? Especially sa country natin sa Philippines. For 333 years, sinapak po tayo ng Spanish. Tama? For 333 years, di tayo nag-iisip. Sinusunod lang natin yung mga friday, mga pare. So, yung umalis sila dito, nahirapan mga tao na mag-isip. Kaya gusto gusto tayo ni-employ ng mga tao sa ibang bansa. Kasi mga Pilipino hindi nag-iisip. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir lang lagi. Di ba? Kaya wala kang makita ng Pilipino na ano, billionaire. Usually, puro ma-incheck. Magaling kasi sila mag-execute, magbigay ng orders. Mga Pilipino, they will just follow. Hindi ko alam, naka-ingrained sa ano natin eh. Sa dugo yata natin yun. Buti na lang, na-reincarnate ako na hindi ako galing sa Pilipino. <laughs> mga ganun yun. So, ayun. Pero may mga ilan-ilan na katulad ni Andres Bonifacio. Ayan, kinay-question ng authority. Si General Luna. Ayan, kaso namatay sila lahat. Yun nga lang. Okay. Ito proof na ang mga tao sinusunod yung authority figures. Merong experiment dati ginawa si Stanley Milgram. Ang tawag niya dito is Blind Obedience, yung Milgram Experiment. Makikita yun dito kung ano yung sinasabi ko. Okay. May libro pong sinulat yan. In a unique period from the early 60s to the early 70s, a group of social scientists conducted a series of experiments examining the nature of human behavior and its relationship to social conventions and situations. In this setting, I allow things to be done to me that I wouldn't allow in any other context. The dentist is about to put an electric drill into my mouth. In this setting, I willingly expose my throat to a map of the razor blade. Stanley Milgram, one of the most influential social psychologists of the time, was particularly fascinated with the dangers of group behavior and blind obedience to authority. What is there in human nature that allows an individual to act without any restraints whatsoever, so that he can act uh, inhumanely, harshly, severely, and in no way limited by feelings of compassion or conscience? These are quite... Well, he might be dead in that experiment required to The experiments that Milgram and others conducted were controversial and, for ethical reasons, may never be conducted again. Yet, the results of those experiments remain groundbreaking, profoundly revealing about the tensions between the individual and society and increasingly relevant to contemporary life. In 1962, Stanley Milgram shocked the world with his study on obedience. To test his theories, he invented a new that would become a window into human cruelty. In ascending order, a row of buttons marked the amount of voltage one person would inflict upon another. Milgram's original motive for the experiment was to understand the unthinkable how the German people could permit the extermination of the Jews. When I learn of incidents such as the massacre of millions of men, women, and children perpetrated by the Nazis in World War II, how is it possible, I ask myself, that ordinary people, who are courteous and decent in everyday life, can act callously, inhumanely, without any limitations of conscience? 
And there are some studies in my discipline, social psychology, that seem to provide a clue to this question. The problem I want to study was a little different, went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience? These are exactly the questions that I wanted to investigate at Yale University. It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. The subjects are 40 males between the ages of 20 and 50 residing in the greater New Haven area. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. Forty years later, Milgram's infamous experiment, Obedience, is still taught in classrooms around the world. Did you open those and tell me which of you was which, please? Teacher, learn. All right, now the next thing we'll have to do is set the turner up so that he can get some sort of punishment. What inspired Milgram, I would say there were a number of factors. One of them is he was very ambitious. He wanted to make a mark in social psychology. And he wanted, as he wrote to one friend, he wanted to come up with the most, with the boldest experiment they could think of. Would you roll up your right sleeve, please? And this electrode is connected to the shock generator in the next room. And this electrode paste is to provide a good contact to avoid any blister or burn. Do you have any questions now before we move to the next room? About two years ago, I was in the Veterans Hospital in West Ham. Mm -hmm. And while there, they detected a heart condition. Nothing serious, but as long as I'm having these shocks, uh, how strong are they? How dangerous are they? Well, no, although they may be painful, they're not dangerous. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, that's all. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock carrier, please, in the next room? But the experiment was rigged. The victim was an accomplice of the experiment. The victim, according to plan, provided many wrong answers. His verbal responses were standardized on tape, and each protest was coordinated to a particular voltage level on the shock generator. Now, as teacher, you were seated in front of this impressive-looking instrument, the shock generator. Its essential feature is a line of switches that goes from 15 volts to 450 volts, and a set of verbal designations that goes from slight shock to moderate shock, strong shock, very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock. And finally, XXX, danger, severe shock. Your job, the experimenter explains to you, is a word pair test. If he gets each answer correctly fine, you move on to the next pair. But if he makes a mistake, you are instructed to give him an electric shock, starting with 15 volts. And you increase the shock one step on each error. Incorrect. You'll now get a shock of 105. Hard head. Just how far can you go with this thing? As far as is necessary. I mean, as far as is necessary. Milgram was very much aware that obedience is a necessary ingredient for society to function, but he focused on the darker side of obedience. Incorrect. 150 volts. Sad face. That's all. Get me out of here. I told you I had heart trouble, and I'm starting to bother me now. It's absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice, teacher. Oh, I have no other choice. My number one choice is that I wouldn't go on if I thought he was being harmed. Now, this man makes disobedience seem a very rational and simple deed. Now, other subjects respond quite differently to the experimenter's authority. Wrong. It's hair. 75 volts. Some psychologists were troubled by the ethics of it. Many, if not most, subjects found it a highly stressful and conflicted experience. People are stammering, stuttering, laughing hysterically and appropriately. Sadistically, people would stop and go, stop and go. They were in a state of conflict, which was created a tremendous amount of stress. So that was the main critique. So we at 3.30. Uh, 
As his voice began to show increasing frustration, uh, so did I. And I was really in a state of uh, real conflict and agitation. One of Stanley Lindner's basic contributions was that you don't ask people what they would do given this hypothetical situation. You put them in the situation. Ah. Continue, I'm Whoa. I can't the pain. Let me out. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna kill that man. The quantum milligram, one of the things that's a prerequisite for carrying out acts that are evil is to shed responsibility from your shoulders and, and hand it over to the person in charge. You know who's gonna take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. I'm actually slow. He didn't hold any gun to anybody's head. Just the fact that he conveyed a sense of authority. Roughly 60, 65% of the people went all the way to the top of the shop board. More than 50 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please. The 450 switch for each wrong answer. Continue. But I'm not getting no answer. Don't the man's help me or anything? Whether the learner likes it or not. Well, he might be dead in there. Milgram made the point, I think, very effectively, that the Nazis were all a bunch of psychopaths at Nelson and Dachau. A death camp from the middle class in New Haven. Who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he's got to keep going. What kind of obedience would Milgram get today if he were to do the experiment today? It's probably about the same. Probably about the same. Why? I don't know. I think people are just inherently obedient. It just really shows like how far human beings will go to appease what they perceive to be an authority figure. Milgram has identified one of the constants, one of the universals of social behavior. The readiness to be authority cuts across time. It's a constant. The other outstanding and distinctive thing about the obedience experiment is how much it has and keeps on permeating contemporary culture and thought. It's still with us in very, very important way. All right. Okay ba yung video? Hindi okay, no? <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, nakasaksiyan yung sa video na yung mga tao, even if alam nila masama, alam nila nakakasakit, because dahil sinabi ng authority figure, ginagawa pa rin nila. Because people are social creatures. Natututo po tayo ni dahil masyarado sa books or sa mga napapanood. But kung ano yung nakikita mo sa paligid, and kung na-pressure ka sa paligid, nagko-conform ka, ginagawa mo siya. Even if you know what is right. So yung video na yun, isa siyang ano, um, katibayan na most people don't think for themselves. Okay? Na ginawa na siya dati experiment, kaso nga lang, di ba? Medyo harsh lang yung experiment nila dahil may yung volts, kahit na mataas na, nakakamba. Imagine 450 volts, kukurenti nila yung ano, partner nila, but still, dahil sinabi, gagawin nila. So, true hurt mentality, ganun din nangyayari sa mata, because di tayo nag-isip, <clears throat> di ba? Even if negative minsan o hindi maganda, ginagawa pa rin natin. More on that, mamaya pa, kung ano mga yun. Okay? So, patulad dito, di ba? Sabi dito, think for yourself. Make me. <laughs> So ngayon, para ako si Galileo. Wala yung si Galileo? Di ba si Galileo, ano sabi niya? The sun is the center of the solar system and moving around it are the planets. So na-discover niya yun. Pero si Copernicus, meron siyang ruling ano, no, um, testimony na based on sa research ni Copernicus na yung Earth daw is yung center ng solar system. Kasi nakikita yun niya, umiikot daw yung mga sun, stars, moon, paligid ng Earth. So inaproba ng church Pope noong time na yun. Pope Pius yun eh. Inaprobahan niya na tama yung theory ni Copernicus. Theory. So dahil tama si Copernicus, sabi ng church, kinulong si Galileo for house at arrest and dumabong na yung mata niya from then on. So mga 15 something to, di ba? 1500s Galileo. So ganun yung nangyayari usually sa society. Nakatulad ko, may na-discover ako something na, of course, mayroong normal behaviors, normal beliefs sa mga tao, it's a challenge lagi yan. Alam mo ba nakakatawa si 
Pope John Paul II. Kailan niya siya? 1993, uh, binuklat niya uli yung ano, kaso ni Galileo. And of course, 1993 na, may proof na talaga na yung sun is the center of the solar system. Correct? Minigyan niya ng ano, pardon si Galileo. Patay niya. 300 plus years na lumipas. So, anong point ng picture na to? Na most ng mga beliefs mo, noong unang panahon, last year or 10 years ago, minsan hindi na updated. Okay? Dahil na, sinabi lang sa'yo na ay ni Pope o ni Copernicus, hindi mo siya na-update, hindi mo talaga din research kung totoo ba yan. Binlindly accept mo na lang kung ano yung sinabi sa'yo ng authority figure. And then accept mo siya. Just like noong time na na-discover yung light bulb. Sige naka-discover yung light bulb? Si Tesla. Okay, naninakaw ni Edison. So anyway, na-discover yung light bulb. Noong mga ta- panahon ng time na yun, lahat ng tao ginagamit lang. So lahat na nila light bulb, diba? especially si John Rockefeller, sabi niya, um, ang light bulb daw, hindi daw maganda kasi gumagamit na electricity. Kasi kailangan niya protectan niya negosyo niya, which is yung Standard Oil. Billionaire siya eh. So gumawa siya ng publication yun, siniraan niya talaga yung, ano, yung electricity nila Edison. Para lahat ng tao, gumamit ng lampara kasi yung lampara ginagamit na oil. Okay? The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. Sabi ni Nauchi. If you end up with a boring, miserable life because you listen to your mom, your dad, your teacher, your priest, or some guy on television telling you how to do your that, then you deserve it. You have to think for yourself. It's like this, ang time na lahat, sumasaludo kay Hitler. Bela doon isa, ayaw ko nga. Yan, pinatay siya. Next picture, wala na siya eh. <laughs> so yan May tuturo ko sa inyo word yan ang tawag yan Skotoma Sabihin nyo nga Skotoma The mind sees what it wants to see Just like a robot I choose to believe what I was programmed to believe I will believe ko ni tinuro sa akin So our next topic is Yan